Hey everyone, Church of SD Fuse. So I just wanted to respond to uh, one of Fringe Elements videos and to start with I'll just play uh, a short part from the beginning of Fringe Elements video where he's asking a question. Imagine a homeless man with that homeless man smell with the, those filthy fingers, those homeless man fingernails and he's wearing a coat and he has some blankets on that he found he has some torn up shoes, maybe he's pushing around a shopping cart, he maybe has some gloves, this, like one glove or something. And he's sifting through trash bins for food, and, he, and he'll eat things that you won't even touch. And imagine he has all sorts of diseases and pathologies that makes it painful for him to walk, or maybe he's hunched over, or, or he has something about him that you can tell that's really, you know, some sort of physical pathology that has gone untreated. And so he's, he's semi-crippled. Or better yet, imagine that he has a kid. Or, or best yet, imagine that this person is a kid. Imagine the most helpless and the, and the most needful person that you can see. Now imagine that person is you. But to answer the first part of the video, yes, society should help this person. Um, to go to a part of the video a bit later on, you make the argument that just because Africa's population has doubled, should that mean that Africa should be getting twice as much stuff? Now, I was under the assumption that you would be, uh, as a right-wing libertarian, not really in favor of collectivism, so I'm surprised that you phrased this as such a collectivist question. Why are you talking about Africa? I mean, that's certainly not how I would see it. Uh, there are twice as many human beings in Africa. Um, these human beings did not decide to get born, and they were born into very impoverished circumstances in which they are uh, struggling and suffering. So, considering that if I were struggling and suffering that would be a bad thing. It is a bad thing if they're struggling and suffering. So yes, those people deserve help. Africa doesn't deserve twice as much stuff as far as I'm concerned. Africa deserves nothing. Africa's nothing I'm really interested in. But the human beings that exist in Africa, they deserve help, yes. Um, as for a lot of the rest of your video going on about, uh, you know, Oh, well, people die. Why shouldn't we let them die? What would happen if we don't let the zebras die? Uh, or the antelopes, or whatever the particular animal was. That's a complete naturalistic fallacy. Just because nature does it that way, doesn't mean that that's moral, or right, or good. As a matter of fact, it doesn't even mean that it's productive, since Homo sapiens has evolved society which, and not just any society, but a much more refined form of society than the antelope or even our, uh, our relatives, the apes, have. So no, just because animals die and nature can be cruel doesn't mean that we have to uh, adopt that as some kind of a uh, ethical standard, or that we should, for that matter, adopt that as an ethical standard. Um, and I think the idea that we should is obviously that kind of um, social Darwinism idea is very popular in certain circles but as a scientific idea it really holds very little water. As for the general gist of your video um, that we shouldn't really care if people die it happens all the time and why should we give these people more money? Why should we give parents more money for their children if they're welfare parents? Again, that's a form of collectivism. You're saying, well, that family, they're, they're some kind of organic entity. Uh, let's not care about the children who had nothing to do with the parents' decision or non-decision or irresponsibility to give birth to the child. Let's take it out on the child. I consider myself in this situation to be the true individualist, the, true per, the truly respectful person of individual liberty. The thing is, I don't care whether your liberty, your individual happiness, your individual ability to fulfill 
uh, your life's desires and to become content. I don't care whether it's a person that infringes on it or terrible circumstances. In today's world, those two can't be separated anyways because all the circumstances are affected by other people in some way. I don't care. Either way, you are being stopped in your, what I find, a right to develop as an individual just like everyone else. Just because I'm lucky and I have those opportunities and that person is unlucky and doesn't, that's not a good enough ethical standard for me to say that we can just drop that person and it's none of my business or responsibility. I regard respect for the individual, respect for an individual's worth to be the true signs of libertarianism and respect for individual freedom. I regard the idea that we can uh, ignore people and their individuality just because they're somehow, uh, somehow part of that other which is completely separate from us as just a form of collectivism really, a form of collectivism which hides under the uh, under the cloak of, of individualism and respect for the individual. But when you look at it, of course, people only um, support that kind of individualism as long as they are at least in a decent position. Because if they were the ones that were having their individuality destroyed and suppressed uh, and their lives cut short at a very young age, then it's quite unlikely that they would support this the interest of other people not having their liberty to spend those five dollars on some frivolous kind of expenditure challenged anyways church of sdfu i'll see you guys all later